Hey there, welcome to another episode on the Electron X channel. I'm David Williams, and in this episode, I want to talk about AC load lines for BJT circuits. To start off with, I just want to refresh your memory about DC load lines. So let's assume that right here we've got a DC load line. And what this represents is the range of valid values for IC and VCE when we're looking at only the DC portion of a circuit like this right here. At one extreme of the load line over here is the saturation current, or IC sat. And this represents the maximum current that you can have in the collector. And that maximum current from a DC point of view is going to be this voltage, the VCC voltage across RC and RE. And in saturation, we can assume that VCE is very low as close to zero, close to zero for an ideal amplifier. So this IC sat is going to be VCC over RC plus RE. At the other extreme of the load line is the point where the circuit is cut off, the current is cut off, and this is called VCE off. And this is the voltage across the collector and the emitter that will be needed to make sure there is no current in the collector here. And that's going to occur when the voltage across the collector emitter is equal to VCC. Now the possible combination of values of IC and VCE are going to vary along this load line and the way that they vary is by changing the base current into the transistor and that base current for a D from a DC point of view that base current can be adjusted by changing the values of RB1 and RB2 to bias the base at a certain value. Okay I've redrawn a representation of the DC load line here again with IC sat at the saturation current and VCE off at the cutoff point. And again, these are representing the DC values for the combinations of IC and VCE. The AC load line is related to the DC load line, but it represents the range of values of IC. In other words, the AC value of collector current and VCE. In other words, the AC values of the collector emitter voltage. So from an AC point of view, we are no longer looking at a circuit like this because we don't need the DC source voltage we are assuming that the capacitors are set so that they become shorts at the AC operating frequencies. And so we can represent the circuit in the AC model. So we will, we will have a V in that gets applied to some kind of input impedance. And then it comes into the transistor. And in the transistor, we have the base here. We have the emitter here with a little RE value in the emitter and then the collector with the dependent current source representing the collector current. So this is the transistor and then that gets applied across an output load. And this load resistor here, I'm going to designate it as little r load. And in the AC model, it's going to be equal to this resistor in parallel with the RC. So since we're dealing with the AC model, I'm going to get rid of this. So again, for the AC load line, we are concerned with the IC value and the VCE value. This is the collector here, so the VCE value is going to be the different, the voltage across the collector and emitter. To get an understanding of what the AC load line is, let's go back to the DC load line here and assume that we are biased right in the middle of the DC load line. Here's our operating point, Q, and it has a value, Q has a, the operating point of Q is VCEQ, which is half of VCE off, and here is ICQ, which is going to be half of IC sat. And then the AC load line represents how IC, the little IC, and VCE can change with respect to the Q operating point. So there's going to be a change of IC and the relationship between that IC and VCE from looking at this circuit, IC is going to be equal to the voltage across this R load divided by the R load. And this IC represents the change of the change in IC across the AC load line and this value of VCE represents the change of VCE across the AC load line also. The reason that the AC load line and the DC load line are different is because for the DC load line, what you're concerned with 
is RC and RE. Whereas for the AC load line, your load changes. Your load is now this R load that I'm designating here, which is going to be dependent on the actual load resistance and RC. But in this case, it's RC in parallel to R load. For the AC load line, again, we want to look at the two extremes. We want to know what the saturation current is from an AC point of view, what the cutoff voltage is from an AC point of view. The IC sat is going to occur when the transistor goes into saturation, and that's going to occur at ICQ plus whatever the change of IC is, which is equal to ICQ plus VCE over R load, as I've indicated here. And since I know that R load, which is the external R load in parallel to RC is going to be less than RC plus RE. I know that my IC sat is going to be greater than my DC saturation current. So on the graph here, my IC sat is going to appear somewhere above the DC saturation current. At the other end of the load line, I want to look at the VCE off. But first of all, I, I can look at this relationship between IC and VCE and just rewrite it in terms of VCE. And then considering my cutoff point from an AC point of view, which I'll designate as VCE off here, is going to be equal to the DC operating point plus the VCE swing going in this direction. So VC is going to be VCEQ plus the VCE swing, whatever that happens to be, or the delta VCE as the, due to the input AC signal. Rewriting VCE in terms of IC and R load, we get this expression. And I can see that my IC, the, the amount that my collector current can change from the operating point is going to be ICQ. It's going to be that amount there. So I, I can rewrite this again as VCEQ plus ICQ times R load. And again, since the R load is going to be, well, my R load is this expression, is going to be less than RC plus RE, I know that my VCE off from an AC point of view is going to be less than my DC cutoff voltage. And that means my VCE off, my, my AC VCE off, my AC cutoff voltage is going to be somewhere between the DC operating point and the DC cutoff voltage. All right, I've drawn the AC load line here approximately. It should pass through the Q point if I didn't quite hit it. Uh, the, the, so the swing for the AC load line is from Z, VCE off all the way up to IC sat. Now what the AC load line tells you is what the maximum peak to peak output you can have for a circuit without clipping occurring. So if we are biased, remember we're going to be biased at the operating point here. I'm going to be able to swing down to here and swing up to here without clipping on those two sides. But if I'm swinging up this way, that's a little bit longer than swinging down, down this way towards cutoff. So what I have for my maximum peak to peak voltage would be the swing this way, or if I'm just looking at the VCE axis of the graph, I can swing from the VCE DC operating point up to the AC VCE off point. And that VCE off point is going to be equal to the DC collector emitter voltage operating point plus the DC collector current times R load. So it's this voltage here, this value here, which is going to indicate my maximum peak, and then two times that is going to be my maximum peak to peak voltage I can have without clipping. And this right here is the important takeaway for the AC load line, because we want to know what is the maximum output I can have before clipping occurs 
because when clipping occurs, that is that means that the output signal, the output voltage, is no longer representative of the input voltage. I hope you learned a little bit about AC load lines and watch the example video of AC load lines next to see an application of this AC load line. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.